John Seesock. John Seesock. Our next competitor will be John Seesock. Here, John Seesock. Great figures in the pole. John Seesock for the first time in his illustrious Monster Jam career is the world Monster Jam racing champion. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Do It Boys podcast episode here with special guest John Seesock. Hello, yeah. John. Welcome to the Thanks RV. for having me, guys. It's a personal, yeah, pleasure being here. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be here, and I got my co-host, TJ Gunther. Yep. Howdy, everyone. Great to see you. So, TJ, I know, it's, it's good to see you older now. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> it's good to see you in the, in the, in the um, silver years. Yeah. Golden. Golden years. Silver years. You have a good edit button on that? <laughs> I got a good one. Bite me. <laughs> I'm not old. I'm seasoned. Seasoned. Like that. Just like a fine, um, a fine bottle wine. of wine. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's great to be here. And we were heading to Syracuse for Monster Jam. And we had the opportunity to come here, stop by, and see oh, you. Cool. And I know the Gunthers have known you for very long. And yeah. it's a pleasure to meet you finally. My, my pleasure, buddy. So... Yeah. It's it's good to be here and be able to do this podcast. Yes. And I believe you're our fourth ever episode, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a special episode coming up soon with Adam Anderson before you. Awesome. And then can't wait to announce John Seesock <laughs> up on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Very unexpected. So I guess we'll get started with your early life and your upbringing. Okay. Um, before you drove monster trucks, what were you into? Um, I everything and anything. Um, I wasn't. It was funny because like in school, um, I we were in Frackville here, and that's the town I grew up in, and everything. And I never fit in any certain group. You know, like I, I was able to dunk a basketball when I was a freshman, but I wasn't cool enough to be a jock. Um, I took academic classes in school, academic and Voltech, but I wasn't cool enough to be one of the smart kids, and I wasn't cool enough to be one of Voltech kids. Like I never really fit into any certain niche. Um, I, I always kind of danced to the beat of my own drum. Uh, I was just a long-haired, skinny kid that liked to be outside in the woods and, and doing crazy things. I think that's pretty cool, though. I mean, <laughs> not everyone's like that nowadays, especially. And um, that's how you get started with stuff like this, oh, a job oh, you yeah. never would expect, right? Oh, yeah. You know, it's <laughs> funny. There was, if you go into town up here, um, there used to be a store called Acme. It was, as soon as you come into town, it was on the left-hand side. So me and my buddies would all hang out there at night. You know, we would drop off the girlfriends, and we would sit there and park and just talk all night you know or cruise up and down town and stuff and mm -hmm. um we were talk about you know the fast cars and i had an old beat-up truck i bought off my dad that i jacked up and uh you know it all started there um one of uh one of my friends he actually was on that um he wants to be a millionaire he was wow. on that, on that wow. show um and uh, he did really well on there um but he uh his mom worked at that store and we wanted to go borrow his car his mom's car to go see bigfoot at the spectrum um he uh we didn't have to say it to her he didn't want to lie to her so we told her we asked her if we could borrow the car to go to the mall we didn't tell her the mall was in philly <laughs> uh we went down there and um we uh I waited outside for autograph from Bob Chandler, and it, uh, it all started there. But it was funny because we still tell that story all the time how we, we stole her car. Um, <laughs> we tried to write it off by saying we were going to borrow it to go to the mall. And to make him feel good, we had to drive through the parking lot of the mall in Philadelphia. That way he, he wasn't lying to his mom. But it's a little gray area. It is a gray area. You were going to a mall. And, yeah. You weren't going local, but you didn't and have we to just say that. Tell her all the information. Yeah, we're going to the mall. We didn't say it was... An hour and a half away. Five, six hours later, he showed back up, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we got stuck. The movie took longer and all traffic and all that stuff we told her. And, you know, <laughs> That's but, amazing. Uh, 
Well, so, maybe when we're kids, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. back in the back in the day, and and yeah. what we're trying to do now is always gotta enjoy the life. Always gotta have fun. life's too short, man. Yeah. And you, you never know where you're gonna be or where you're gonna end up. And if you have a dream or a passion, man, follow it. What's the worst that can happen? You fail. Yep. Right. You know, I fail all the time. It's the only reason I know how to do anything is because I'm I screwed up so many times. But it, you talk to anybody who succeeded, it's they they failed a bunch of times, and there's no crime in dying doing what you love and there's nothing wrong with trying something that you love and come up short at least you right. tried right you know like there probably before you guys were born um, young punks, definitely me <laughs> um there was a tv show called american gladiators oh, i actually remember that one <laughs> okay well i tried out for that i went to madison square garden and i waited out we waited outside I mean, my, me and my buddy and uh the first round you had to do 30 chin-ups in 30 seconds fully oh. extended off a three-inch conduit they had a Throughout the Madison Square Garden, um, and it was so cold. I remember you, you couldn't even sign the release form. You couldn't hold a pen because you were just so cold. And I, I went in, and I was I was just like that much from making it. Um, and Ice and them came back and Blaze and all like, hey, go back and do it again. Because once you made past the first round, you know it, that took out like eighty four percent or eighty six percent of the of the, of the whole crowd. And uh, I'm like, no, I'm good. And I'm like, what do you mean? I try, I wanted to try it. I tried it. Come up short, but I tried it. it. So it doesn't matter if you fail. It's you, you know you tried something and you either it works out or it doesn't. But at least you tried, you know, and you know in your heart that yeah, I did it. Yeah, I mean that's the way to go about things. Even if you fail, like you said, you're building yourself up for yeah. future stuff. And so many people sit back on the couch and they're like, well, if that was me, or well, if it was you, then you all listen to you tell me how to do it. <laughs> yeah, you know it's. Um, and people are afraid they're embarrassed to fail or they're embarrassed to fall or stumble. Or, right. And it's a fact of life. Yeah. And taking it to a bigger scale in monster trucks, Bob Chandler yeah. originally didn't want to crush cars and stuff because he thought it was going to be negative. too scary. Yeah, and a negative thing for monster trucks. Mm -hmm. And originally he didn't do it until one time he decided to do it and it was a huge success, you know. Well, look at that. That video from Pontiac, when the first time he did it in front of an audience, mm -hmm. that, that video is epic, you know, and uh, it's um bob chandler is awesome yeah you know like he is he is he's the man um i remember how cool it was when i he invited me to his house for christmas and stuff because i'd always be on the road like first quarter we'd be gone for three months and uh end up right at the st louis at the dome down there racing and, um he invited me over to his house and you know it was such an honor to be accepted by them guys and i have nothing but love and respect for all of them i mean it, the people in the shop down there, the crew guys, the drivers, Bob and Marilyn, all, all of them were just such a, a bigger part of my whole career than they realize. That's amazing. And you said, and it's said in the industry that everyone's like family, yeah, even when everyone's arguing and yeah. <laughs> tussling. Yeah, we are. Um, that one year, the year that uh, I beat Tom in, in Houston, um, he was on a 38, Tom Mance, he was on a 38 uh, race winning streak. Nobody was able to touch him. Uh, we were down in Houston, and um, Dan Mor Moriarty was the one of the TV announcers down there. Mm -hmm. um, we I ended up taking it out, and uh, it was such a big thing. Um, you know, all the drivers were high fiving and stuff. The show pretty much came to a stop when I when after I parked the truck, and um, it we were just a family. We were all happy for each other. Well, that summer, um, we did a show up here in Bloomsburg at the Chamboree. Tom was there, and there's three ladies from town that um, they had him cornered up against the trailer. He called me on the phone. He said, get over here and save me. And I go over <laughs> and they're yelling, him, don't you be picking on our Johnny. And, you know, because we <laughs> Tom and I were arguing on TV. We were mm -hmm. throwing dirt at each other. We'd do a donut in front of each other or accident and swoop the back of the truck into into his tire or something. Um, but it's like having brothers. You know, you can beat your brother up and down to all you want, but if somebody else steps in, that's a different ball game. Right. That's how we all are. You know, uh, we would argue whatever, but we're family we're brothers you know god forbid somebody else tries to come in and hurt somebody because then it's a then you got some problems on your hand yeah those tires are 700 pounds and we toss them around <laughs> like they're like they're nothing so yeah. <laughs> we could all of us could take care of ourselves pretty good <laughs> so the the first truck you driven was sun and impact yeah. is that correct yes sir what did you so did you actually put all that stuff together and make the name and build it no truck? um i uh tom bites um he just passed away not too long ago uh, he had the truck, um, and I bought it, and uh, it wasn't, it was done, but wasn't done. Okay. Um, 
so I ended up uh, I ended up buying axles off of Earl Daggett with Thumper. Um, I bought a couple tires off of Kid Rarick, Hunter Chicken. Um, I got rims out of um, STC, you know, back in the day, and um, got it together and stuff. And uh, my first show was uh, Boyertown in Pennsylvania. It was called Fun Days. And I was called, hey, can you go down there? One the truck that was supposed to be there broke on the way in, and I filled in for them. Never driven over cars before. I driven a truck around and thinking, hey, how bad can it be? You know, you're in a big truck and you're crushing cars. You don't realize that you're in a big truck, but that car you're going to run over looks like it's 15 feet high. Um, the show there, which I, was a, I thought was a small little local town th carnival, had like 6,000 people. I'm like, oh man, wow. you know, I had no, no clue what I was doing. That's how I met Ed Micah, my crew chief. Um, he he was there, but it it all started there. You know, it was such a like I really thought it can't be that bad. It can't be that big of a deal. Um, back then we had steel body trucks. Uh, you didn't look through the far firewall. You we hung out the side door. We pinched the door with our arms. My rear steering switch was underneath the mirror of the truck. You know, you you drive like this and get back in, hold on the steering wheel, and get back out and drive and. You, it was so cool. It was so real, and uh, that's where it all started. Though, yeah, it's something I, my I think my sister took a hundred and ninety some pictures of that wow. one event, um, and none of them worth anything. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, a picture of me walking down through the field or looking at the car, all kinds of goofy stuff. But it it was such a big deal back then. It was awesome. So, how were seat belts back then? <laughs> um, when I first got started, we wore our lap belts. Okay, my thoughts. Um, like in your car. Mm -hmm. uh, then we went to uh, a jazz plastic seat that you'd see in dune buggies and stuff. Mm. And we went to the Fine Point Harness then. Um, like we we didn't want to wear helmets back then because it messed up your hair. Right. You yeah. know, it, it's, you know, we had hair back then too. <laughs> <laughs> you rather the hair go through the lid? Yeah. yeah uh, the it, it, it was such a different world. You know, when it would rain, we rolled the windows up. Put the defrosters on in a truck. You know the the roll cage and everything there like you, for safety that like you would need. Um, for the MT, we raced for the MTRA, so with the MTRA, so you had to have meet all their specs. So you had a cage and everything like that. But you know, put the defroster on, roll the window up. It was still like a real truck that you would drive. Had a key to start it. You had switches uh -huh. to turn on, but I always left the key in there for the ignition. It was something that, like the people today don't. I wish there was a way for the drivers now to see what it was like. I think they would appreciate what they do more because um, the, there's a lot of skill level out there. And the, the drivers are phenomenal, and it's just it's great to see. But that stuff back then was real. It was we were like barnstorming. You know, we had more fun going from event to event to event than we did doing the events, right. hanging out with each other, and putting ravioli cans on the intake of the tractors going down the road so they're warm when you get to the fairground so you, <laughs> you can eat them uh racing from event to like the new york mini series of middletown new york uh hagerstown weedsport all that that was just a blast to do and you would just be racing from track to track and having a good old time and your haulers and all that you yeah each other yeah yeah it was just so much fun that's amazing. And on the CB radio, yelling at each other. Oh, left bad. And right. Oh, bad. Yeah, it was the abuse and stuff was phenomenal. <laughs> it, all done with good heart. And if if anything happened, you know, you're right. You know that these guys have your back. We had, you know, people, trucks would wreck or break down or whatever the case may be. And you knew you had your family there that would help you. Mm -hmm. I uh, I was going to um, that Landover, Maryland to do a show. And, yeah, hmm. <laughs> hmm. going across down to 83. As um, soon as you come into 83 from Pennsylvania, there's a scale on the right-hand side, mile marker one. <laughs> mile marker one, always number one. Hmm. Uh, I had a motorhome, I had a tractor with a camper on the back and an open trailer. I tagged as a motorhome, didn't need to go on a scale. Uh, one of the officers down there didn't agree with me. Stopped me in traffic, made me back onto the scale, and it was pretty nasty. It was, I don't care what Pennsylvania says, you're in Maryland now, and 
What is your electric tra breakaway switch on your trailer? I'm like, sir, I have an air brakes. I don't need an electric breakaway switch. I've been doing this job 30 years. Don't tell me how to do it. Get over and shut up, and I'll be dealing with you in a minute. <laughs> and that was nice. And then it went downhill from there. <laughs> uh, long story short, they uh, put a cop in front of me and a cop behind me and escorted me out of state. Well, I was supposed to be doing a morning media in Landover. I, they wouldn't let me back into Maryland. The, the rest there going back into PA is right at that exit, right at, at the state line. Uh, there was no way to get into Maryland. I called uh, USHRA. They sent one of the other truck drivers up with his trailer to come get my stuff. So you, you pull in the rest area and you see a monster truck and tires and spur, it looked like a yard sale, a monster truck yard sale to rest area <laughs> down there. Um, we load everything up into his trailer. He got me down there and we ended up doing the, sh the show and everything good. But at, at night we came back and when the scale was closed and kind of made our way back down there and stuff. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's like the stories on the road is always so much stuff and there's always people there to help each other. We, um, you guys know what scales are mm -hmm. uh, going down the highway. Uh, they, we were going down to a show, not saying where, but one of our buddies with his team, we're all independents back then, uh, didn't have all his paperwork. So he was worried about the scale, getting pulled in and get tagged and all the grief that can go on there. Uh, the guys, the scale guys are there for a reason and they do a good job and, mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> they but, look good. They look good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the skill guys. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Field team. Um, but we we lined the tractor trailers up, and he stayed. You ever see Smokey and a Bandit? Yeah. Of yeah. course. That's what it was. He was in the in the hammer lane, and we were alongside of him, trying to keep him blocked from the, the scale house, and it uh, it was awesome. It worked. <laughs> it worked like that. Uh, but it, it, you know, stories like that, you know, um, you know, you only allowed, back then they were really hard on hotels. Like you only allowed, like if you had a two room hotel, you were only out two people in there. We would all chip in and one guy would go get the hotel room. And then when the paper out the front desk weren't looking, you'd have five or six guys going in there, you know, get showered up or whatever, and having a place to crash to, just to try to save money so you could put it back into your truck to, mm -hmm. to make it faster and bigger and better. And, Put more lights on it and all kinds of cool stuff. Keep up with all the changes and stuff. Uh, no, it looked cool. No, put more lights on. <laughs> yeah. Back then it was like the long, the person with the the most KC lights on were, was the winner. Mm. You know, if you make the truck look nice and shiny. On the, on the hauler, not the monster truck. Oh, the, it was a monster truck too <laughs> in the beginning um, until you wreck it. And then you get steel bodies, so the bodies are hard to repair back then. Mm. And usually that's all it takes is one. Like my first trucks had an impact. You know what gold leafing is on a fire truck? I think so, yeah. That's real gold on there. They had the little swirls. Mm -hmm. My first lettering on my first truck was real gold leaf. Really? Yeah. You know, oh. and when they, when they put it on, it, the gold is re like on tissue paper. It's really mm -hmm. thin. And they kind of put it up against it, and they have a little uh, round, like, like a pencil eraser, where they would kind of screw, kind of turn it on, and they mm. blow the gold up and go on there. and they, But it, it's real gold. Uh, my lettering, uh, you know, who's going to letter a monster truck with gold lettering? Yeah, gold leaf. <laughs> um, after, until I wrecked it, and then after that was all decals. But, you know, the first one was all real gold leaf. That's an amazing fun fact. Never knew that. <laughs> you guys are going to learn a lot today. <laughs> I don't really know when to shut up, so if I'm saying something bad, you better like, kick me in the shin or something. Or <laughs> you sure you want to say this? <laughs> Boom. I'll roll my Pepsi can over. I'm at my Mountain Ma Dew can. Mountain yeah, Dew can. Yeah, yeah. My Mountain Dew can. I was looking for Mountain Dew, but I got stuck with the second ray tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, the ugly stuff, sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was reading uh, through some notes before, and uh, at some point you drove part-time for Mike Welch? Yeah. Yeah. Mike and I were, fan were friends for a long time, um, even two different coasts, but we were friends. Uh, I actually found tires out here for him. He, was, he ran these... Uh, 67 inch tires, 67 34s. Uh, they're a little inch taller than the, the tires that we use, uh, but they're a lot thinner. And I, uh, the tire place back down the road here had a bunch of them. So I called Mike and McKay. I found these tires. And he was coming out to do some shows out here in the East Coast uh, for Hot Rod. And I took him and got him the tires. And that's we became best friends after that. Mike asked me, he, 
Mike is a genius. Mike Welch, I, I wish I knew the stuff that he forgot. He's just, his brain works in so phenomenal ways. We would sit down at, at a truck stop and, and eat, and he would draw things up on, on napkins. And like, what do you think of this? And, you know, he, he's just amazing, his thought process. If he was able to put half of the stuff on that he had on paper to in the real life, who knows what his sport would be. Um, leading into that, he had um, airplane struts that he, uh, uh, like nitrogen shocks like we have now. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what the air, airplane strut is for the landing gear. But it's a big can, like a four inch or five inch can. Um, he put them on his truck and he wanted me to come out and test it. So he flew me out to California, out to, to Washington. And I went on tour with him for, um, I think it was like two months, uh, three months. We did Bellingham and um, Yakima and all this cool stuff out there. And I had a chance to drive that truck. It was called Pirate um, Pirates Pete, I think. Yep, Pirate Pete. Yep. Um, short wheel base. You know, high compression engine with, with the nitrogen shocks. And it was way ahead of its time. Wow. But it was and there, cool. And there were airplane shocks for... Airplane struts, yeah. Struts, yeah. struts yeah. when they were landing. Yeah. Wow. But he, I, he, I'm sure he did some stuff to them to kind of tweak them, but that's what yeah. they were. And what wow. year was that around? Yeah, I don't know. I'm seasoned. I don't remember the year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Um, probably... 89? 89. 89. Yeah, 88, nine. somewhere around there. It was That's incredible, trying that at that point in time. Yeah, he was way, he, way Mike, at the time. Besides Mike being an awesome guy, I'm extremely intelligent. If you've ever had a chance to sit down and talk to him, you know, he, the, the stories he can tell you and the, the way his mind works is unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, he's, and he's a cool dude. That's one, incredible. Another one of the guys that I'm honored to be able to call a friend. That's amazing. So you drove part time for him before you drove sudden impact. No, I had sudden impact at that point, mm -hmm. and then at some point you took a break to drive. Yeah, he okay. called me and asked me if, um, if I could come out and help him. I'm like, yeah, wow. So he flew me out and spent some time out there. It was different. It was a whole different ball game um, back then. Like I had a fire suit on, and it, I looked like a NASCAR driver. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, my helmet was lettered and painted up. Um, it's a, a whole different ball game back then. But it was neat to be able to drive that truck and uh, put it through its paces and stuff. And yeah, you know, I wish I could drive it now with the skill I have now than I did back then. It'd be fun to drive a short wheelbase truck and I could really have a blast in that. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. And like one of the only trucks that exists like that is on the West Coast. Um, I forgot the name, but it's a very short wheelbase truck. That one runs for, um, not I think it's Insanity Tour or something like that. But it's a very small wheelbase, so it's able to get crazy slap wheelies yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, you sneeze and, at it and it poof on the back end. Yeah, it's incredible. So after sudden impact, you you drive that for a few years. Where do you go from there? I was I had sudden impact and I ended up driving Devil's Dodge for Larry Birch for a little bit. Um, they he had he was i was doing a couple of my, um u.s hot rod shows he had a pretty good schedule and he asked me if i'd be interested in driving for him you know big at a big hemi blower motor and stuff and um we had a lot of fun in that truck having that horsepower was, was pretty cool uh you know i drove that for a while for him and still drove sudden impact in between after that it was all sudden impact um for a lot of years and and we would fill in for each other like okay? Back to the family thing if, mm -hmm. if somebody's hurt or whatever i think i've driven like 15 trucks or something um definitely a long list <laughs> you have to ask my that's boys a, they know them better than i do that's amazing uh, we were at, at shows like uh i was in dallas uh, before they built the stadium we're doing the arena there and uh um alan Pizzo hurt got hurt and he has two trucks there so i they asked me to drive his truck so i was driving my truck getting uh, doing around hopping in his truck um going back and forth you know between trucks and but it's it's all about it was always about the fans mm -hmm. you, you did what you had to do to make sure that the fans got a show and we all looked at it that if if i was gonna spend 20 dollars to go take my kids somewhere i i want to give what i would expect my kids to see or have that treatment 
So you, you make every fan is the only fan. I mean, it, I, I was saying before, it amazes me that anybody would ever want my autograph. So I was, I'm was, i still honored when anybody asks for the, uh, it's a small town guy that got to live, be, around, right. be around the world because of a big truck. <laughs> you know, I never thought I would leave the state, let alone be around the world a couple of times. <laughs> That's amazing. And I'm sure growing up, like we were talking about before, you know, error, trial and error yeah. and stuff like that, especially in monster trucks. I started building <laughs> my first truck in my dad's driveway. It was my street truck. Um, and my dad would just sit there and yell at me, what are you doing? You're cutting that good truck up. And, uh, um, when I first got Sun Impact Mobile, uh, I was my dad lived on a dirt road, the last house on his, on his there was only like three houses there. I was out driving up and down the dirt road, and I ended up breaking the transfer case and stuff in the middle of the road. And my dad sitting on the porch, yelling at me, screaming at me, and um, yeah, I got rest of rest his soul. He uh, he was my biggest one of my biggest fans, but also my one of the biggest critics too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't know until I, he would go to where he worked and he would brag about me and stuff to his friends and everything and. Um, but it, to my face, he would just ride me. Like, there was no tomorrow, <laughs> but that's what made me who I am today. Mm -hmm. Great so, parent. So, so when your dad's yelling at you, your parents are yelling at you. They're doing it for a reason. You know, it's and, and you, TJ. And event, TJ. And the, it's true. And me. Eventually, you're gonna go forth and reproduce. So you're allowed to. You could take, take it back take and it back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So on the list, you did you fill in for Dennis Anderson? Uh, I over in the, I did, the BBC, mm. over in England. Uh, we were doing a tour over there. I had the Grave Digger truck. We were taking around doing displays, and I got to do four bands live on the BBC. With, the Grave Digger truck, mm -hmm. um, in my Batman fire suit. <laughs> um, and it was I, I I didn't think nothing of it at the time, but apparently four minutes on the BBC is a big deal. We were. I, I got to drive around. I was doing donuts and all kinds of stuff. I'm drifting a truck and just acting like a goof uh, and having a blast. But, <laughs> yeah, I drove over there uh, back in the day when um, before fell uh, before Howard was involved. With Den uh, Dennis was just a driver like the rest of us. His wife Julie asked me about driving Grave Digger. I was going to move to uh, South to North Carolina um, to drive Digger. I Fred Schaefer asked me to drive barefoot for the Penda series and I was going to do that because I, I beat barefoot up in uh, up New York um, Stafford Springs no mm -hmm. not Stafford Springs up West Le Lebanon and a couple days later Fred Schaefer was calling me and I'm thinking oh he's calling me to yell at me um, <laughs> so I wouldn't call him back <laughs> I was afraid to call him back because I didn't want to get yelled at Fred Fred was short but he's all muscles and everything like that um, I think he's just going to kick my ass I eventually answered the phone and he, he yelled at me for not answering him sooner uh, but he said he wanted me to drive the Penda series I wanted to do it but I didn't I was afraid of stepping on toes like Todd Frolic Norm Miller I, I didn't want to step on their toes because you know in my mind they were part of the team and they they should be the next one in line not realizing that they didn't want to do the Penda series uh, and I turned it and after I turned it down, and, and I started seeing these guys more. That's when they told me, like, "We wanted you to drive that." We so I didn't do it because I didn't want to step on your toes. But it was cool to even be offered the chance to drive digger or the chance to drive right. barefoot and stuff. And, you know, yeah. you know, I was I was high in, high in the hog when I when I got asked them things because it, it was neat to just to be considered for that. What yeah. an honor! It's it, incredible. It, yeah, like right now, like people might they might not think anything of it. But back then, it was a big thing. It was a, a big to do. Yeah. Um, Bob Chandler uh, was going to send a body up for me to be Bigfoot in between Sun Impact stuff. But I was so busy doing Sun Impact, I couldn't do it. We were doing the Pro MT racing, and, and I, I, I keep on going back to Bob because I, I love Bob to death. It, 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 that whole organization was just great people. We were, back then there was no GPS, nothing like that, and Bob had a GPS in his motorhome. It was only about that big, and it would give you speed and stuff like that, and time and everything. He let me borrow it in between. He was telling me about it because I'm like, like a, a techie type of guy, and we were talking back and forth about it. He uh, let me borrow it in between races, so I used it in Darlington and 
he let me keep it for three weeks to the next pro MT race. Mm -hmm. and, was, and I just, I was driving home watching that thing and just kind of playing with it, thinking how cool it was the one that I was friends with Bob, and two, he let me play with his, you know, who knows how expensive it was back then, the GPS unit. It's <laughs> like all those little things just mean so much. It, it meant the world to me. Uh, Bloomsburg Jamboree, uh, Bloomsburg's about 30 minutes from here. And at the time, that was the biggest show around. Bigfoot had an anniversary, so they had a bunch of the trucks up there. Bigfoot 5 was there. And I, it was Bob's, it was my birthday. It was uh, a couple days before. I was born on July 3rd, so it was right, it was like a couple days before the Jamboree. And Bob says, hey, you know, do you want to drive a, you want to drive one of our trucks out? I'm like, yeah. He said, which one? I said, Bigfoot 5. <laughs> he said, well, why do you want to drive that? I said, because I beat all the other shit. I want to drive something cool. <laughs> he, he started laughing. Uh, but he let me drive Bigfoot 5, which was a big honor. Uh, it just, it does little things, man. It just means so much. Wow. It's incredible. I mean, to be able to have the honor to be presented to Drive Grave Digger and then be able to talk to Bob as a friend yeah. instead of just a fan. Obviously, being a fan your entire life, I'm sure, oh, as yeah. long as a friend. It, you know, when Julie, um, Lyle Hancock was driving back then, with Digger and, and um, Robert Parker, and when I saw Julie and she asked me about driving, I'm like, man, that would be so cool. But, you know, I didn't want to move my family. Um, the sudden impact was taken off pretty good. And so I just I turned it down. But just to be offered all that stuff, or to be able to call Dennis a friend, you know. Yeah. Um, I have pictures of Adam and Ryan when I used to pick them up at school. <laughs> when we were, right, we'd, be, we'd work at each other's shops all the time. Mm -hmm. I was down there. And I picked, you took Dennis's truck and picked up Adam and Ryan at, at school. Um, they had a, they, we used to put our kids in the, in the haulers when we were racing because they couldn't be out in the track running around. So he, I, they would wear some impact hat when Dennis come on, he'd take that off, put the grave digger on it. <laughs> so I'd take the grave digger off, put the sudden impact hat back on. <laughs> for a long time, one of my crew shirts I signed for Adam was in his trailer. And they found it when they were selling the trailer. They found the, the crew shirt, but and Adam showed me it and everything. It was so cool. Like, it, just those memories and to see where they're at, those guys are at now. Mm -hmm. and how icon, how much icons they are in a sport. It, all those all those things. I mean, I'm, I sound sappy, but all those no. things are so cool. Yeah. I'm sure he still has it, too, somewhere in his, in his garage. I, w I would... I would hope so. I would think so. But it's the memories of, you know, we, we, we all helped raise each other's kids. Yep. Um, uh, Bob Fisher, you know, with his family. And, um, you know, I would, my boys won't listen to me. Like, you want me to call Porter? <laughs> oh. I'll get him on the phone right now. Oh, Daddy, I'll do my homework. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, we would have to, you know, scare him. But that's the only, th only thing they paid attention to was monster trucks right. and the other drivers. They don't want to get yelled at by Porter or anybody. <laughs> so you guys were the babysitters. <laughs> we all to an extent. for each other's kids. Yeah, we <laughs> all helped raise each other's kids. All, all of us, you know. It, um, unfortunately, for good and bad. You know, we're there when the kids are born. You know, when they graduate. Um, too many times we were there when the kids passed away, um, and nobody should ever have to bury their own child, uh, let alone seeing somebody care so much about have to go through that you know um there was one example that's that's uh, that i will take to my grave and it that was hard you know when i get like he this driver called me out of the blue and uh, well, actually that, that night my phone would ring i would pick it up and they would hang up happened three or four times and uh, he was him calm but he didn't know what to say and then when he finally was able to tell me, he told me what happened, and you know, it, um, we went to the funeral and all that stuff, and it was just so heart wrenching, because like I said, we all raised each other's kids, we all, you know, seen them go like, like you, mm -hmm. you know, you weren't much bigger than diapers when I first met you. <laughs> and I was down. I, what birthday was that when I came down? We think the eighth. Yeah. What? Eight or ten? Ten? When I came down to your birthday. I think it was ten or twelve. Ten? Yeah. I mean, it, was, it would have been twelve. It would have been twelve. But, yeah. We were racing. It was, it was, it was eleven, I think. Eleven or twelve. Eleven it's or been, it's been a long time. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's kind of neat, too, to be able to see 
who are our fans are the kids that we they were fans and now they have their own kids and mm-hmm. they bring them around and tell them the stories and everything it, it, monster trucks are a lot more than just trucks with big tires for guys holding steering wheel or girls holding steering wheels there's a lot more to that whole culture that whole world than people give credit to yeah. but, you know, it's amazing how you can influence somebody positively and negatively um, by driving and using the, the platform that you have in front of you yeah. you know look like you, you, you know, you're utilizing the platform to make a career which is phenomenal you know major major props to you for following your dream and stuff and thank you and you, I'm sure there's a, a ton of people that are you're inspiring and you don't even know. Um, you have no idea what you're doing to these people to help them follow a dream. Yeah, I mean, especially just being like a guy behind the camera. <laughs> and I have my little shenanigans, like the frog deal that I haven't mm-hmm. explained yet to you. So you're like, <laughs> this guy's a puppet? Oh, okay, that's a little odd. Or, um, you know, stuff like that, but... You know, I'm just the guy behind the camera, you know. You feel like you're just the guy behind the steering wheel driving the truck for the fans and stuff. It's the same type of thing where it's like you don't realize. We, we did Junkyard Wars. Uh, the my, I was the the expert on the team with the, the Law Dogs. They, and they were cops, so they all had code names for everybody on the radio. They called me Big Bird. Because I was the, the leader. <laughs> Big Bird! Yeah. That's I guess his like nickname. Big Bird Instagram and a One of my fans from Jersey gave me a little stuffed Big Bird. And that was in my truck forever. Wire tied to, you know, to the frame rail. You know, for, for forever. All the stuff that the fans ever given me from day one, I still have. Every piece that a fan ever given me, I, I ever gave me, I never got rid of it. Uh, it all it meant the world to me. It still does. So it's in all in Kyle, my son Kyle's basement in his house. There's totes and totes and totes of, of stuff. It's, you know, sometimes I, I go down and start looking through things and reminiscing. and All that meant so much to me. Cody Saucier, he is an unbelievable driver. I am so proud of him. But there was a picture of him when he was 10 years old with me in, at the Astrodome. His mom and dad took. And then when he started crewing for me, they took the same picture and she put it together, which I, I have it somewhere. Uh, it's so cool to see him as a fan and him as my crew chief. And then for him and I to be able to win the world finals. Hey guys, I'm John Seesaw, driver of Batman Monster Truck. Quoting myself, we're out here in Las Vegas, getting ready for the 2008 Monster Jam NGK Spark Plug World Finals, getting a Batman truck all nice and tight and getting ready to defend our title. Here's some guys out here talking smack. We're going to take, like the last year, one round at a time, one race at a time, and put this Batman truck in the, in the finish line. Uh, but he would leave me notes in, in the truck all the time. He, I'd hop in the truck and there'd be a, a note stuck to the steering wheel or <laughs> this way up or... <laughs> You know, hit it hard, you know, like all, <laughs> all kinds of like more specific chords, but yeah. you know, all kinds of funny stuff. And uh, this is gonna probably upset them. Sorry, Cody. Uh, <laughs> we were in Indianapolis and we were doing a pit par- special pit party for um, some blind Boy Scouts and some deaf Boy Scouts. And uh, after we're done doing all that, and Cody was there and I, he seen what I was doing with the kids and you know, with the, the blind kids we are you know, touching things and explaining to them and and, I, and Cody started doing that too with the kids he left me a note that he put on my steering wheel and I'm not going to embarrass him by saying what it is but I can cry right now by thinking about what it was you know it was it touched my heart so much you know and to now see him where he's at and everything and you know, all grown up and married and you know a phenomenal driver it's it's so cool See, I'm going to old sappy eyed. <laughs> Mountain Dew break. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's what the boys need. Wait for the burp. <clears throat> Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, that was sad. Oh. Uh, that was that. Like <laughs> Oh. No. I'll, I'll call Bryn and get her on the phone. She can burp. <laughs> she would rock this whole place. <laughs> oh, man. For nine years old, it, I don't know where she gets all that air out of her because it just sounds like an earthquake going off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so for me, I guess my next my next question would be, when, is your, when and 
was the deal, and what year did you start driving um, Batman? 2007. Um, so I went through a divorce, and I lost my, my trucks and stuff. The day that happened, Monster Jam called me and said, don't worry about it, call and be with your kids. It was on Good Friday, actually. Tomorrow. Years ago, in 2007. Uh, they said, go home, be with your kids, and Monday you start driving for us. And uh, that's where it all started. You know, so for the, in 2006 I, I, is when that happened. I mean, yeah, 2006. So the first truck I drove was uh, Suzuki. Suzuki. Oh, yeah. uh, Eric Swikehart was my crew chief. Uh, we left, and I didn't know what to expect. Um, we went to Bangor, Maine, and then from there we went to St. John's up in Canada. We did that little tour, and we dominated. We just kicked butt, and uh, it was giving it to Digger pretty hard all weekend, both weekends, and uh, having fun. <laughs> and the thing, and it, it made him mad because it, it was I was just having fun, uh, right. and the fans loved it, and I was loving it. The other drivers weren't. And that's that's where it started, you know. It was Suzuki truck and Eric Swikehart. We were going up. To, actually, the, the, we put a laptop on it, uh, again, off the record. Um, yeah, which is really good. Cause I'll, I'll edit it out. <laughs> no, no, you don't have to. It's just again back to the DLT thing and the cops. Love you guys. Um, <laughs> we put a laptop on the dash. We would watch movies going up the road. It helped make the time pass and everything. And, there was a movie about a, a little town that was off the grid, off the grid, and how the the family kept this town hid, and they thought that there was nothing. They never. Everybody says the world's flat. You got on the end, you got to fall off the face of the earth. <laughs> well, that's how they thought this town was. They they had all their the new people in town thinking that if you went through these woods, it was a monster there, you're going to die mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But basically, it was a, a rich guy, rich families that got together, put a big fence around this forest, and they built a civilization. So I think I think the movie's called The Village. Okay. But I remember it clear as day of sitting here watching that movie going up there and uh, and Eric telling me about what they expect because I've never driven for Monster Jam, one of their trucks, or how things are, are going to be. And you know, we just had a blast and we kicked butt. And it was so much fun. And, uh, we drove a bunch of the other trucks. And that next year, um, we were down in Virginia Beach. And Mike Wells was there. He's like, what do you think of this truck? It was the Batman truck. I'm like, that's cool. I said, it'd be, the visibility would be awesome. And um, I said, well, we're going to have you drive it. I'm like, okay. Uh, but there's stipulations. Don't wreck it. The body's $18,000. <laughs> uh, don't do this. Don't do that. You know, the, the rules. Um, it was the m- most expensive body at that point. At that time, yeah. And, and that was without the fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the fire was cool. Uh, that was before all that. Like, like right now, when you see the people out there rolling and wrecking and all, we didn't have that option. Right. You know, Grave Digger had a green light, do whatever he wanted to do. Um, we had somebody we had to answer to, especially with that body. But it was cool. You know, our first stadium we raced in was Atlanta, and that was the first stadium win uh, for that truck. And my first stadium win, then that led on to, you know, Vegas. But we took a lot of wins in that truck. It was a, I think that year we won like eighty-seven percent of our races. Wow, wow. It, it was a lot. And that, and and during that time, that's they didn't really have the status like that. You you guys put has to do your own math pretty much. Yeah. They... Well, Scott Douglas, he used to keep track of all that. Oh, okay. Um, uh, he would always he he was a statistician. Uh, Brett Kepner, uh, again, that's before your guys' time, young punks. Um, but he, he would remember all that stuff. Army Armstrong, th- those guys could remember things that I, I don't even remember. Uh, I used this blame because I got hit in the head too many times. <laughs> but they, th- their, their memory is phenomenal, and they would keep stats of things. And um, it just was, again, the family thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, well, you, you won this, 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 and this, and you won, you know, and I, I don't even remember. I'm just thinking about the next round. And, but it was, you know, it all started there. I mean, the, the Batman truck was cool. It opened up a lot of doors for me. So, 
driving Batman, and I know this is like it's a superhero truck in my opinion because of Batman and, and all the movies and all that stuff. Did it make when you were sitting in the seat? Did it feel different in that truck than any other truck that you've been in? As far as like because, because of, the name and the butt and what it represented, maybe. Um. No, no. It really. It, I took it as an honor to drive that, and to be part of the DC Comics and stuff. Mm-hmm. It didn't. Uh, I can't say it didn't change my thought process or my. I mean, if, if anything, it happened to me a little bit because I was worried about that body. Right. Yeah. You know, that I, I'd have to pick my, my deals. You know, if racing, yeah, I'm gonna throw it down to racing freestyle. I'm gonna try to do a good freestyle, but I gotta watch because of that, that body. So it, it kind of hurt me in that aspect. But it, I didn't change the way. I looked at things or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed the Batman fans are phenomenal. They they are diehards. They're. I don't know if you guys saw on Facebook. Um, one of our fans, for my birthday, a couple years, two years ago, three years ago, had the the real Batman do a, a cameo, and sent me a video wishing me happy birthday. He he was Batman for. From day one, for all the voices, for the comics, for mm. everything, and his, if it's on my Facebook page, you gotta check it out because it's so cool. And he talks a little bit as Batman, and you know, I'm Batman, and all that stuff. And then at, after he's done his deal, he goes in talking like we're talking right now, and he explains how Batman fans are are so diehard, and it's because they can relate to Batman because he, he doesn't fly. He doesn't, he's just a normal guy trying to make a difference in the world. Right. Kind of like all of us. And I never really looked at it that way until he said that to me and he was right. You know, we're just trying to make a difference. I, my whole thing was racing as I was trying to inspire people, you know, you follow your dreams. Don't be afraid to, to stumble or fall or fail. Uh, you go out there and try. And, you know, I come from a small town. I come from a big family that had no money. Um, I wore hand-me-down clothes with my cousins. You know, I I was the, the geek, the long-haired, skinny geek. Um, so, like, I never, like, I, my career and how I, my persona didn't fit. You know, I wasn't that guy. But if I was able to follow a dream and make it happen, anybody can. When I would go to schools, every week I would go to schools and do presentations. And I would talk to kids about not doing drugs, follow your dreams, stuff like that. And I was able to relate to them. Like back then, Guitar Hero was the biggest game. And I, I rock on Guitar Hero. <laughs> but I was able to relate to the kids. Right. You know, I sat there just like they did and thought, I don't need to have Spanish. I don't need German. Well, I was wrong. I ne- I've been in Spain nine times, you know. I've uh, been in Germany... 10, 11 times. I, you never know where you're going to end up or where you're going to be. So the things that you, you would, that cab, that's ever going to be me. Well, it can be you. And I'm a prime example of that. So I was always trying to inspire kids to, to look at it a little bit differently. You know, like math. I like math, but, you know, math, what do you use that for? Well, build a monster truck. It's yeah. all math. It's all triangles. It's geometry. <clears throat> all, all that stuff. You know, and I tried to, the Batman thing was, able to when he was hit, when he did the video it explained it more it really hit home how people were like the batman because he's like you and i uh, just has he just wants to make a difference and just like you and i yeah, underneath all the armor is a regular human being yeah, yeah. yeah you gotta watch the video because it's and it was funny because he his spiel like i was going through a, a kind of a crappy time i was having some issues and um, no, just I was bummed out, you know, stuff like that. And he, his video and his message hit home so hard. And you know, and I, I listened to it a dozen times, and listening to it makes me realize that that message for everybody, it wasn't just for me. I was able to take it for me, but right. it's something everybody could listen to. Uh, you guys watch WWE, yeah, Gene Snitsky, you know, who he is, um, he. Has had the tagline, um, "It's not my fault," uh, but he's a he's a Batman fan, huge Batman fan. 
one of my other friends brought him up to meet me. Um, yeah, it was the first time. Like, I'm a big guy, and usually I'm the, like one of the bigger ones in the room. <laughs> These two monkeys made me look like a midget. Um, <laughs> but uh, Gene's a, a Batman fan, and he he saw that video, and he was just in awe. And, you know, I gave him a, a crew shirt, and oh, we always we're, we're good friends now and stuff. And um, but it's it's it, everybody can relate. Everybody can associate with that character. Right. That's what, that's what the comics were, the beginning of them. Not only were they to start a business and stuff like that, which comics are amazing, but they all tell a story, like you're saying, about how you can relate to that character. Mm -hmm. Although it seems like a fantasy, in reality, it's just a dressed-up version of what we're doing. Yeah. But yeah. with superheroes and villains. <laughs> yeah, and, and if you look deep enough, we have them. We have plenty of villains, plenty of superheroes. Yep. Yep. You know, it's right. just a different costume. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm gonna bore you guys because I could sit here and talk, tell stories all night. Just, Man, you're this, gonna you're gonna this run is out. Of great, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, after the first year of driving Batman, incredible honor, getting to the World Finals where you I took your that. first championship, your first racing championship. That was a big one. That was huge. That Do you was, remember the whole day? Without a doubt, hundred percent. The Vegas is cool because people from all over the world go there and they're there because they're die hard. They, they are the heart and soul of that sport. Mm -hmm. um, I think the year I won, there was, it was every state, every province of Canada and 13 countries were represented. Um, so when we have the, the make a wish that we do and the, you know, all, all the, the media and all that stuff and the, in the, the pit party before the event, the fans have come up in there, post for pictures and all that stuff. I had uh, two dollar bills. I had notes. Like fans were giving me for good luck, and, and my pockets were full of these things. I had one fan come up to me, and I, if you watch the video from Monster Jam, you'll I talk about it in there, and this is gonna make me cry. So if you guys make fun of me, I'm bigger than y'all. So <laughs> I would watch it. Watch <laughs> out, big bird. Um, he was in Afghanistan. Him and his crew were Batman fans, my fans. They were coming over to the World Finals. Four of them didn't make it. And he had their shirt on, their their crew their tag shirt. And he asked me if I would if I would wear it. I'm like, yeah, you know, I yeah, hell yeah. Um, middle of the pit party, I took off my, my shirt, gave it to him, all sweaty and everything. <laughs> he gave me his shirt, and I, um, so I'm going to dedicate this to, to you guys. You know, and uh, I can't imagine what it's like to, you know, guys, that you're fighting with serving your, your country and everything and then losing them, and it's still, and that was a plan that they had coming over there, and he still did it in their honor. Yeah, committed to it. Um, well, we, uh, when I won, I jumped in the stands, and that was one of my, part of my interview, was thanking him, because if it wasn't for those guys, we wouldn't be able to live our dreams. We wouldn't be able to do podcasts or uh, have a life. For no freedom. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that was one of the millions of stories that night, but I was, see, tears. Um, I'm a big sap. Chills. Um, is. You know, it, it was so heart-wrenching. And so, you know, the, that, we say it all the time, but the fans have no, you guys have no idea what y'all mean to us. You know, it's, it, it is emotional and it is special. You know, it's, and it's an honor to be able to drive a truck for you guys. We appreciate it. We appreciate all the... I'm sappy. <laughs> we appreciate all the memories and and my my favorite memory is um when you got you were we invited you to go to um my birthday party mm -hmm. so yep i'll step you too <laughs> <laughs> so that meant a lot to me because
Now you're making me look good. I know. <laughs> Thank you. And that lamp's made because, um... Oh, yeah, thanks. And that lamp's made because... Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a badge of honor. I'm I gonna, know. I'm gonna wear that it. is a badge of <laughs> honor. Dry that up. Not, I know, it takes a lot of time to, uh... Get out of your way for a lot of people, so... And it means a lot so that... Jeez. <laughs> Dude, it's a lot easier on this uh, side, yeah. isn't it? Oh, <laughs> it is, you go, little boy. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it means a lot because of... You spent... You took time out of your, out of your life to share it with me for one of my special days. And... Being able to get a good carton, because that's what we hit on my birthday. Yep, <laughs> and remember that. going around the track and racing you and all that stuff during that hour, whatever it was, however long it was, it was was definitely a time of my life. And I, I was there for the food. Like, I, 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 didn't, I didn't even know you were there. I was just there for the food. It, it was, it's an honor to be able to even be asked that. You know, I like I said before, it amazes me because there's. There's nobody in the world I want to I wait for an autograph from, and I got some cool friends, and I love these guys at death. Like all the guys from Three Doors Down, you know, they are awesome, and they they have a special place in the world because of the things they do for people. And uh, these guys are the, the cream of the crop, mm -hmm. um, and they'll tell you the same thing. You know, it's all about the fans. It's if it wasn't for you guys, we'd have to get real jobs, and we're not that talented, you know. I thank God. I don't I, know you're pretty talented to buy it. Thank God I had to wear a helmet for a job because I have a face for radio. <laughs> um, but it's you know, it's an honor to be asked. It's an honor to be able to do that stuff. And maybe not everybody agrees with me. Not maybe not everybody looks at it that way. But I can guarantee that the guys that get it look at it that way. Yeah. So I got a question. For All you right, Tom Cat. So I got a question. So do you remember that day when John was there? I'm pretty he, sure my eyes were burning like gave, crazy, right? What he gave to you? Pretty yes. Surprising. So he gave me some. He gave me the glasses that he wore. Yep. My yellow ones. The yellow yeah. ones, which I still have. The liquids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the liquids. With, which you with, made the, us, with the rose colored lenses yeah. in it. Yes. Which you you made us get like forty of those tears <laughs> 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 because they were out. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's my job with sponsors. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> So, but that was then, my glasses. They were they were mine. They were the ones I wore in Vegas. They were the ones I loved them the glasses. Those lenses were phenomenal in there. Oh, yeah. I love them. They were they're awesome. And uh, a flag. I remember the flag. Where is that? I wanted to bring that flag. Where is it? Oh, so you're hiding. I got that. <laughs> it's in your hope flag. chest for when you get married. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Is. So yeah, and the, that was a flag. You. You said that you had that in the world final or something like that? I don't know. That was the flag that they gave us when we were asked to go to the world finals. Oh, yeah. So when, you, when you made that that field, you, they gave you a flag. Mm -hmm. And the trucks that were going to be participating flew that flag. And that was the flag that, that was my Batman flag for, that was given to. I appreciate yeah. it. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Thanks for the food. <laughs> no oh, Thanks for letting me kick your ass and go, and go hurting. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely fun. It is always fun. But that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You know, so like when you guys make it big and famous and stuff, don't forget where you came from. <laughs> and don't forget to inspire people. You hear that, Wayne? Don't forget to inspire people. Do it, boys. Don't inspire. Don't definitely, that's inspire. definitely the idea. I'll come back and haunt the living shit out of you guys. Oh, if you... Please do. Seriously. Oh, man. You, you, it's, Batman's coming back. It's, it's, oh, yeah. it, it's important to inspire. Mm -hmm. you know, well, that was one of the taglines with the grinder truck. Inspire, serve, and grow. So every time we went to one of their stores or the DCs, the distribution centers, it was always, you know, we're here to inspire, serve, because that's what they do with the customers, and grow, so help you grow as a person, as a, you know, whatever, whatever you were doing at that time. Speaking of the grinder truck, do you, I think you have questions, wait. Oh, grinder? I'm sure you do. Well, I mean, I wanted to hear the Batman oh. World Finals story. I'll take okay. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, first out. Go ahead. Yeah, so first ever championship, yeah. Batman. That was an incredible show. And you said you remember the whole day. The whole thing. Run the fans through it. Oh, it from we spent two weeks out there. 
And I was actually, uh, you might get, get them tissues. You're going to need them on this one. <laughs> uh, um, mm-hmm. Okay, so like I said, I was going through a divorce. And no divorces are good. So you won't be doing them. Um, they wanted to have my boys out there for me. And for circumstances, they weren't able to go. I wasn't happy about it. Um, but it is what it is. You know, I'm there to do a job and I put my happy face on. And, you know, I was, you know, my, I talked to my boys every day. And actually, again, we're, we're half a mile from where I grew up. And the night that I won, they stopped traffic in the main street out there with pots and pans cheering and like all their buddies they had a party at the house and they put up walking traffic but anyway uh the week the whole time out there is cool you're doing meet and greets we're doing radio interviews um uh the one comic um mind the mencia um he uh, he was at the radio station when i was doing my interview and uh we end up going to his show and just it's it's cool you know i was out there with uh um pawn stars and you know all, all that but get to speak time with the fans you know they have the, the pit party is phenomenal it's non-stop it's and what's cool too is because the fans are hanging out in the hotels that we stay at so you know we get to eat ice cream with them or breakfast or all this all this cool stuff um we end up uh, racing um, we ended up winning which was a dream come true if you see the video like, when you when you come out to chicanes the one on the left uh, Mike Wales the rest is always not with us anymore but he is an icon in the business and always will be he stood at that grandstands right there he's one of the safety guys so after you get done racing you look at him you give you a thumbs up if you won thumbs down if you lost so I'm racing Dennis, and I, I don't even pay attention to who I'm racing. I'm running my own deal, trying to hit my points and everything. Um, I see Dennis cracking these donuts. I'm like, shit, I lost. I look over at Mike. Mike's like, and I went, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh. So and I look over at Dennis. Is Dennis still cracking donuts? And I'm like, I'm getting my some. <laughs> you know, I'm getting me some. I go out there and I start cracking this donut. And normally you do donuts because you're excited and i was doing donuts to calm down because i didn't know what the hell to do next <laughs> you know you spend your whole life wanting to be the best at something or trying to be at, at something and then when it, when you achieve that goal it's like you know now what you know so i i always dreamed about winning a championship never thought i would win a championship and didn't know what to do afterwards so i'm cracking donuts just until i was able to calm down and get a game plan there um I stopped the donut, I get out, and I stood on the roof of the truck, and I threw my arms in the air, and that, that, that picture is pretty famous. Mm-hmm. The, especially the one where they're in the stands, there's a, some fan, a family that has Batman signs, and there's a picture of me. Like it's, it's right behind, uh, yeah. yeah, and I see that picture everywhere, um, which was cool. And I, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to look like a dork if I climb down out of here. So I jumped on the hood and slid down like a, like a sliding board. Um <laughs> In the midst of that thinking, I hope I don't fall on my face. <laughs> no, um, that makes but but it, but it worked out pretty good. <laughs> um, I ended up jumping in the stands with the fans and I started doing an interview. And, you know, the, as scary it was as it was being with the fans, like being everywhere every around you like that, I was so comfortable at the same time. Right. That, that You guys make it home. You guys make it safe. And um, that's where we belong. You know, it's with, with you all. And that, that was that was so cool. So here's the part with the tissue. Um, I don't see my boys for three months because I'm on tour. Back then we drove the tractor trailers. We crewed, I crewed on the truck, you know, the whole nine yards. Uh, the next night after the race is the awards banquet. Um, I didn't know, but Charlie Mancuso and the guys got a hold of my sister and got a hold of my two boys. And flew them out overnight for the awards banquet. So I had no idea. Um, I'd rather be in front of 80,000 fans than 80 of my idiot friends. <laughs> I know what they're thinking. I know what they're going to say. You know, um, so it's, it's, 
hard to beat in front of your friends. So we're, we're going through this, the awards banquet. Mike Wales is right up against me. Keith Speller. And these are both guys from Monster Jam. Right up against me. And I'm, and I'm a nervous wreck. I'm thinking, man, I must be worse than I think I am if these guys are <laughs> so close to me, you know. Um, I ended up getting a couple awards, like humanitarian award and I think sportsman of the year or something. And the racing award is the last one. Well, I'm sitting down and I'm getting nervous. Um, you know, I'm sweating the whole nine yards. Mike Wales is sitting next to me and he's rubbing my leg. And I'm like, oh man, I must look like shit. <laughs> yeah, I must really be worse than I think I am. Um, the curtain opens up and my two boys walk out with my trophy. And I look at Mike, I'm like, can I go there? And he's like, yeah, go get them. <laughs> so I ran up on stage and uh, I, there's a picture of me hugging my boys, holding the trophy. And there's not a dry head in the house. Everybody's crying because everybody knows the story, the, the back story. Um, and I said this uh, a speech. I had no idea what I said. I didn't know until the video came out, the DVD of what I said. And I was worried after I said it, like after I calmed down that night, I'm like, I hope I didn't sound like a dick. <laughs> you know, I hope I, I hope I didn't make an ass out of myself. And thank God the interview, the my speech was pretty, it was okay. Um, but the reason those two guys were next to me is because they flew my sister and my two boys in overnight and they were trying to keep me away from seeing them. They were upstairs, right. we were in a Hard Rock Cafe on uh, on the stage there and there was a balcony and they, my two boys and her were up on that balcony. They wanted to make sure that I didn't, you know, I get lost all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, I ever see that thing, I call it a squirrel. Yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> um, they want to make sure I didn't run into them and stuff. But it, it it was unbelievable. Like it was amazing, you know, to have that. Um, the next year we win. <laughs> that's got a whole another set of stories behind that one, <laughs> and more tear jerking type of things. Five-time World Finals competitor John C. Sock and Batman then faced the defending Monster Jam World Racing Champion Dennis Anderson for the 2007 crown. A flawless run was necessary to beat Gravedigger, and Seasock delivered. Down Thunder Alley, Digger has a one truck leg lead. It will be one of them. It's a five second penalty. Gravedigger is hit the pole. John Seasock, for the first time in his illustrious Monster Jam career, is the world Monster Jam racing champion. And rightfully so. This means so much more than just a trophy, you know? All the years of fans supporting me, my family, my friends back home, all the guys that helped me back in the shop when I first got started. You know, and uh, that's the dream come true. Hope my boys will be here to see it. But uh, I'm beating Dennis Anderson in the finals, you know, he's the icon for his 25th anniversary. He's been around that long for a reason. He's great, you know, and uh, I just can't believe it. say uh bill you want real emotion <laughs> you got it now <laughs> um thank you all for bringing my boys out here you can't imagine how much that means to me um if it wasn't for junior and cody we wouldn't be here either you know they've uh given me an awesome truck to work with kept me head on straight um tighten all those nuts and bolts um you know thank all the sponsors um i have so much to say and i really don't know how to don't know where to begin um, you know, I got to thank everybody at Live Nation. You know, uh, the drivers, we get all the glory, we get all the credit. There's so many unsung heroes, our crew, our families at home that put up with us being gone. Um, everybody in operations, the dirt guys, the body guys, um, the marketing, sales, um, our bosses that put up with all crap, whining and crying every day. Um, thank you all, and thank you for the, all the drivers and friends. You guys are uh, more than just friends or family. Um, I love you all. I don't know what to say. I'm just going to say thank you. And this will conclude the Do It Boys podcast number four with John C. Sock. Make sure to tune in to the second segment of the John C. Sock episode. 
Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell for when we do future stuff. Thank you for watching, and make sure to keep on doing.